So it's, you know, facts from history where, you know, you, you, you let the history speak for itself through the mouths of the people who actually lived it. I, you know, there, there, there was some stuff done out of uh, South Africa like that, and there was uh, d some collective uh, theatrical work by South African actors who had lived through, you know, uh, beatings and lived through apartheid, and they just spoke their truths. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't well-made play. It wasn't, uh, you know, three-act theater. It was just them speaking the truth, and it was horrifying and mm -hmm. beautiful and terrifying at the same time. But selected. Yeah, selected, and that's true. And shaped and yeah. organized yes. uh, and interpreted. Mm -hmm. right. hmm? yeah, that's probably two different Do you think uh, that any of the hist... Oh, God, maybe I shouldn't ask this question. Um, <laughs> being uh, good <laughs> Canadians, we always assume that we're interested in other people's history. Mm -hmm. Right? We all talked about the Queen, right? The movie about a a German family who moved to the British throne and she's still there. Should mm. people be interested in Canadian yes. stories? Yes, yes, Absolutely. yes. Now, is yes. that a good nationalistic response? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes, it what is. Do you really believe it? Yes, I we really believe, believe it, too. It. Yes. We believe it. Huh? Am I alone on this? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, man. But are there any larger-than-life characters in your historical yes. Canadian story? Sure. Yes. Are there any mythological heroes, or yes. are they only good Canadians? I mean, good <laughs> Canadians. No. I think one of the best examples of uh, uh, the mythologizing and uh, the, the best of, of Canadian drama is the... Uh, Donnelly Trilogy by James Reaney. Yeah. I, totally that is, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. That is yeah. mythology and mm -hmm. Canadian history writ large. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a great pleasure of, of meeting him. And he showed me some of his notebooks. And it was verbatim. Hmm. It's like Mozart. It? it was like yeah. he was taking dictation mm -hmm. from these yeah. things. But yeah. he'd done. Now, there's a guy who does his homework. Like, he'd gone and talked to everybody in Lucan and everybody. Mm -hmm. and, uh, You're talking about James Rainey? Yes. And he, he had created this thing, not only a historical record, but like this outstanding piece of theater. Yeah. Unfortunately, if I could be a devil's advocate, you know, nationalism's kind of a dirty word these days. You know? Like the, the, the idea of being proud of, of being, uh, of our Canadian stories is a little bit tattered. I mean, all of us, we're kind of preaching to the converted here. Mm. But I think the vast majority of Canadians don't give a damn about Canadian. Uh, and think that Canadian history is boring. Oh, we could prove them wrong. Yeah. I, I, oh, I think that's the so case. I, I think, you know, we're all happy to, we're all in this room, I think we're all in agreement, but I think the vast majority of Canadians don't really give a damn about Canada, like the, the history of Canada. Mm -hmm. They don't know who the second Prime Minister of Canada was, yeah. you know, or whatever. I, I've been asked to comment on a miniseries mm -hmm. called uh, Glory Enough for All, which was about banting and best in the discovery of insulin. Um, And it puts me at odds with the three people to my left, which you probably told by the kind of question, in that I, I find my instincts as, as an actor to smell the period, to smell it, uh, somehow gets me excited. Uh, I mean, one of, my, one of my great fantasies is to go to the stand on the corner of, of uh, King and Young in 1820 and hear what happened at King and Young in 1820. Mm -hmm. Hear the accents, because there will be accents from every part of the world, and to recapture that. And part of that was, uh, and again, why I'm at odds, that, that the, the, the minutia of the period of 1920, and the minutia of the heat of the summer, and the dogs, and the, and the, and the bad insulin, and stupid doctors, the minutia of that detail was, in fact, not an archivist's obsession but in fact is a dramatic obsession in, in mm. that the mi minutia of where, where, how people talked and smelled and their attitudes, to, attitudes towards the animal, their attitudes towards needles that you know, had barrels on them like that instead of barrels on them like that. The minutia of the, of the families who came up from Rochester because their kids were dying from, from uh, diabetes and, and one shot uh, revived the child in 12 hours and suddenly it was it was uh, headlines around the world. The minutia of that and how people absorb that is a particular obsession of mine. Uh, which, so it's, it's great to talk to these three people who really don't 
who seem to share it as actors, but they don't share it as writers. And maybe that's mm -hmm. why they're better writers than I am. So they're <laughs> But no, it is. But that is also belonging to a period of, of Canadian drama, historical drama, which was meant to say, we do have stories that are worth listening to, it. listen to this one, as opposed to only looking at the history of other cultures mm -hmm. to try to understand what the archetypes of history. So maybe that's where that came from, yeah. Uh, we were talking about uh, comedy, uh, there be, and, and speaking about truthful history comedy, because there was a, and Mark knows about it, there was a Baroque opera written about a love affair uh, performed in the Baroque style, I believe in hockey equipment, with a love affair between Wayne Gretzky and Marc Messier. <laughs> <laughs> Comedy, history, and Janet Gretzky was the third party, but <laughs> Mark says it was only done in workshop. That's right. <laughs> and who was the writer's name? Uh, the composer was Steve Thomas. I, I can't remember who the librettist was. And you see, that, would, that comedy would It was uh, quite, uh, it, 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 it was supposedly going places, but of course, you know, pretty, uh, <coughs> call, call the lawyers, you know. I have a, a sort of a, uh, pardon me, to indulge myself here, because uh, all these people have acted, and, and, and acted well. And when you act, do you not actually try to, if you're acting a historical person or something in an historical time, mm -hmm. do you not actually try to, smell it yeah. in order mm -hmm. to, to bring more authenticity to what you do. Mm -hmm. But what you're doing as writers is sort of turning aside from that instinct to actually Absolutely. smell the texture of the time. I mean, that's your acting instinct, so why doesn't that roll into writing? Uh, I know uh, Michael Riley, I think, is a good example of an actor who um, really, really gets into his characters and does like this voluminous work and it's very, you know, lots, lots of reading and stuff. But I know, alternately, I know other actors who are channelers. Mm -hmm. They read the text and they think, you know, they, they may get some background or something, but they, they read the text and, and they, they, they try to channel through the text. Mm -hmm. uh, as a writer, I'm a big fan of the muse in, in, in channeling. And when it works, I, I'll, I know when it works. Mm -hmm. Because people, the audience gets it, you know. Also, because uh, I had a chance to play uh, Nelson Mandela at uh, LKTYP, and it's hard. What was really hard, it, it's the same kind of thing, actually, where you're given a lot of information, but you cannot use all that information as an actor. That's really frustrating. I'm sure you've experienced this too, where, uh, you know, you can't spend hours arguing with the playwright about how, you know, Nelson Mandela actually never would have. He was actually right handed, don't you realize? It's yeah. the, the, to a certain degree, even as an actor, there are certain things you just have to let go of yeah. mm -hmm. and try to not necessarily capture the true individual to be a mimic. You're not, you don't want to be a mimic, you want to be, capture the essence, or you hope you can. So when you write, do you try to capture, not mimic the past, but capture the essence of that time? Is that it? I think that's it. Yeah. Is that it? Okay. Yeah, well done. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, because I'm curious about, uh, about mm -hmm. the question of liberty.